It's December 17th. I'm going to see Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens, tomorrow. So to celebrate the new movie, I'm going to play The Empire Strikes Back for Atari 2600, which is the one you voted the most for out of all the retro Star Wars games in the poll. I've also got a couple of really dumb surprises for you today's episode. So it's time to hit the theme music for Mist 6, Episode 8. Oh, shoot. I had myself muted. Again. Oh, boy. Should I start over? Maybe I'll start over. I'm going to start over. Alright. Um, where, where did I start? Oh, yeah. Let's go back to this. Alright. So. Um... PowerPoint, right? Yes. Okay. Bring back MST3K.com. Fully funded. Go check it out. They still have merchandise. Uh, Rifttracks.com. Mary Jo and Bridget uh, do a Christmas uh, special. Go check that out. Um, I'm playing Empire Strikes Back for Atari 2600. Uh, I think that covers everything. Okay. Okay, so uh, this game is basically the Battle of Hoth, uh, the snow speeder and ATAT -AT portion. And you just fly around and and you shoot the ATATs, and as they get more damage, they'll turn colors. And once they turn yellow, they're a few shots away from being destroyed. And the only th the only thing you have to do really is just fight as long as you can. If, if you look at the bottom of the screen there, you'll see um, that little bar with the flashing dots. That's sort of the map. And uh, these ATATs are marching towards the right. And when they get there, they'll be able to blow up the uh, shield generators and then you lose. The other way you can lose, of course, is if you get shot down four times. And 
and uh, that's that's the game. Now there's a couple, yeah, so I just showed you one little thing there. Every once in a while a little weak spot opens up uh, on the ATATs, and if you shoot that weak spot, you blow them right up. I remember this game being much more difficult with the standard Atari controller. One other thing you can do is those little uh, bolts. Oh, so right now the music's playing, which means I'm invincible. The force is with me. I'm invincible for a short period of time. So I'll take advantage of this to just lay waste to these guys. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, the other thing you can do is those bolts they shoot, you can actually shoot them um, before they get you. It's difficult. There's a small target area. So, and one other thing I can do is if I land in one of these valleys, I can uh, regenerate my health, I think. Oh, there I go. Maybe not. There's really no end to this game. Um, you know, except when you lose. When you get shot down or they reach the right-hand side of the screen. Because they just keep coming. So, I don't, I don't know why, why I really like this game all that much. I mean, compared to later Star Wars games, this is not good at all. I spent a whole lot more time playing X-Wing, for instance, than I did this game. Um, and I don't think it's even really the best Star Wars game on 2600. I didn't have uh, the other ones, though, so... This is what I, this is what I got to... Play. There was Jedi Arena for 2600, and I believe they also made a port of, well, Forces With Me, a port of the arcade game, which for 2600 that sounds like it might be terrible. Um, it's not too bad, and the 5200 port is pretty good too. So one of the strategies with this game is, when you first start out, there are there are five walkers, and when you as you shoot them, that does take damage. They change colors, and when they get to like uh, yellow, uh, they walk really slow. Well, as they change colors, they walk slower and slower. Yellow is the slowest. So one thing you can do is uh, slow down the very first one and the very last one and then you can take your time destroying all the ones in the middle yeah, pretty much So, and you know, in the tradition of a lot of the 2600 games of the day, score plays a big factor, I guess. It's one of the objectives to get a really high score. And beat your last score and so on, right? So, this is my last ship here. So, as soon as I'm shot down again, I'll remember my score and I'll just keep trying to beat that. Nope. Oh. 1633. There we go. There's the first round of Empire Strikes Back. <sighs> I'm not sure what's going on here. Some sort of... Uh, 
I don't know. This is just sort of autoplay, I guess. That's pretty cool. I remember that. Alright, uh, let's, uh, let's do it again. So let's try the slow them down strategy. So I turn green. Nope. That's, that's orange. There's yellow. So he's really slow. So I'm going to go all the way to the last one. Oh boy. So he's still going to be yellow. Now they won't pass each other. That's sort of the, the key to this strategy. I don't know if this is working out that well. <laughs> okay. So the first one and the last one are yellow. Oh. I don't know if I like the strategy very much. Maybe I'm just not skilled enough to dodge these the little black bolts there. Oh boy. Okay. So I've been avoiding Twitter and Facebook today. Because I know that uh Early reviews are out for The Force Awakens, and there are some early showings, I believe, today. So I'm trying to avoid spoilers as best as possible. So as I record this, it really is the 17th, and I, I really not really haven't seen the movie yet. I really won't see it until tomorrow. Oh, that guy's gonna hit Echo Base if I don't hurry up and get him. So, there are a lot of theories flying around for the last few months about Luke Skywalker being a, the bad guy or Kylo Ren really being Luke Skywalker or something like that. And, you know, Luke Skywalker's not in the poster, all that crazy stuff. I don't expect much to come of that. I think it'll be relatively straightforward. Not a lot of twists or craziness going on. Uh, you know, Lucas has always said that Star Wars is like poetry, and episode one reflects episode four, and so on, right? So I would expect this one to be in the same vein as episode one, episode four, right? Pretty straightforward, no crazy twists and turns. 734? Ah, even worse with that strategy. Oh yeah, let's try again. Um, so if there, if there are crazy twists or secrets, I would expect them to be in the next movie. Reveal in the next movie. So this movie is just a setup for it. No, I could absolutely be wrong, you know, J.J. Abrams, he's crazy like that. Um, but, you know, one sort of really out there theory that I, I'm sure it's not something I invented was, is the, has something to do with clones, right? So, we all know that, uh, Luke Skywalker had his hand cut off by Darth Vader in Empire Strikes Back, the very movie that this game is based on. And sure, diehard Star Wars fans will know that in the uh, oh, Force with me in the Timothy Zahn books, 
cloning ba made a, played, a, played a big role in the plot. There's sort of this um, clone Jedi who became sort of a dark Jedi and he was helping the Empire. Um, but he got a hold of this place called the em Emperor's Storehouse where the Emperor stored a bunch of artifacts and useful bits of technology. One of the things that was stored there was Luke Skywalker's hand. And so this Jedi Master took the hand and some cloning chambers and made himself a clone of Luke Skywalker. Now you may think, well, it's just going to be a, a young kid, but that, that's explained away in the book as well. Cloning can work super fast under some circumstances. But anyway, so, you know, I have sort of a theory that, I mean, it's, I don't think it's what's going to happen, but a theory that this Kylo Ren guy, you know, they show him talking to Darth Vader's helmet, the burned Vader helmet, and the whole thing. So I'm thinking, well, this guy clearly has some sort of connection to Vader, I guess. Um, maybe this guy is a clone of Luke Skywalker. But he's been, you know, he's been turned to the Sith or the dark side or whatever. So he's sort of like an alternate universe uh, Skywalker, right? What if Luke Skywalker had gone to the dark side? So, I don't know, that's, that's, that's like an out there theory. Now, that, that might not be revealed in the movie tomorrow, but it could be revealed in the movie three years from now. So, I don't know. We'll see. Well, I'm, I think I might beat my score here. I'm at 1100. I've got the sort of hit and run method working for me. So one of the other top vote getters in this poll was a game called uh, Dark Forces, which is a game that came out in '95, and I remember at the time being very excited about it because at the at that time it was pretty much like uh, Wolfenstein and Doom. That was kind of the state of the art for 3D shooters, and, and Quake I think was maybe just starting to become a thing. But Dark Forces was pretty much a Doom clone, but it introduced some really interesting features, I mean at the time, that you couldn't do in a first person shooter. Uh, jump, crouch, and um, experience multiple levels you know, like Doom Wolfenstein, they're, they're basically just one level. Just flat, right? Even You know, Doom had some tricks to make it seem like it wasn't flat. But it really was. It was, it was a 2D game that was kind of projected in, in 3D. Uh, Dark Forces, though, did a little bit of trickery to make it seem like, you know, there's multiple levels. Multiple you know, actually true three-dimensional. And I remember just the ability to jump I thought was so interesting in a game, you know, if you had jump in a game like Doom, for instance. It would make it a whole lot more interesting. But, you know, I went back and played it and 
I don't know if it really holds up that well. But yeah, I was kind of looking forward to maybe trying to play that game. Like I said, I, I played X-Wing a whole lot uh, when that came out. B-Wing expansion, the whole thing. So I didn't put that on the list because, I don't know, it's not quite retro enough and it's a pretty darn good game. But hardly hard to do it justice in an hour. I mean, I was into the whole modding scene with that game and everything. What was that beep? 2,000 points. I'm doing pretty good. Maybe that beep was for 2,000 points. I think they kind of missed the boat with this game. And in terms of like, they could have had like a Asteroids clone as like a level 2 or something. You know, I know the Atari 2600 was not exactly, uh, you know, didn't have a lot of capacity for, for gameplay, but I think they probably could have squeezed that in here. 2145 pretty good. Better than the, the first game. Second game was worse and then the third game was better. Cool. Alright. Play one more game then I will uh, I'll reveal one of my little dumb surprises. In the form of a little video break. So, I mean, that the Kylo Ren is, is Skywalker, or whatever theory. I think it's gained a lot of traction on, on the internet, but I don't, I don't think it's going to really be the case. The more out there theory of Jar Jar Binks being a, uh, a Sith Lord, or a Sith Master, Puppet Master, whatever, way out there, I uh, don't think that's happening. <laughs> <laughs> but um, pretty wild. I think there's been talk of a resurrected emperor, or like the emperor didn't die. I don't see that happening either. Uh, you know what I would like to see is uh, is uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn in a movie. Maybe not one of the main movies. You know they're doing a series of like side movies like Han Solo, prequel, you know, things like that. So why not a Grand Admiral Thrawn movie? I don't, I don't know how that would really work, but it would be fun. And what, if, you're, uh, if you're a Star Wars fan, um, I would definitely recommend checking out that uh, Rebels TV show on one of those Disney channels, Disney XD. It is, uh, it is very good. Um, you know, I never really got into the Clone Wars series that much. Yeah, there was, there was a few good episodes of that show. But the Rebels show is, is very good. They bring bring in some of the voice talent from the from the original movies, you know. They have Billy Dee Williams, they have James Earl Jones, and they bring in uh, a character from Clone Wars to kind of tie it to the prequels. But it's really well done. 
Uh, R2D2 is in there as well. C3PO may even be in there. Like an episode or two. But it's not really like. It's not clumsy or. You know. One of the complaints that people have about Extended Universe books, games for instance, is that every single game, every single book, you know, Luke, Han, Leia, they, sh they show up somehow. Like they're omnipresent in Star Wars. Well, the, this Rebel series is not like that at all. It's a whole different set of characters that just happen to cross paths with, uh, you know, main Star Wars characters every once in a while. But anyway, check it out. It's a good series. It's it's does a, it's doing a very good job, I think, of tying together uh, you know, sort of filling in the period of time between the Clone Wars and uh, the Death Star. So, definitely good. I think that's that TV show kind of sets the standard by which I will sort of judge the new Star Wars movies. Like, if they do a you know, good as job as the movies as they are with the TV show, then we're going to have a really excellent Star Wars movie experience. Ah! There's another game on that poll. Uh, it's an NES game. Star Wars for NES. But it was a Japan only game. It was uh, published or developed by Namco. And it's Japan only, so it's in Japanese, but there is a English translation patch. Not that you really need to understand the language to play the game. But it's a, it's a really bizarre sort of take on, on Star Wars. Uh, so, I don't know. I was kind of hoping that would get some votes. I could, could play it a little bit. Okay. Alright, well, 1251. Eh, not great. So, take a little break here. And I'll be right back after these messages. A great movie. Now a great video game. A movie which challenged your imagination. Now a video game where the challenge never ends. You saw Luke Skywalker battle the Imperial Walkers. Now bring the battle home. The Force was with Luke Skywalker. Star Wars, the Empire Strikes Back video game. Uh, so there you go. The Empire Strikes Back for Atari TV commercial. Alright, back to the game. So it was about 120 points for taking down a walker. Ah! Mm, not quite. Ah! Got greedy. neighbor of mine had the uh, full-size at, at toy, the original one. Yeah, I was always super jealous of that. He had a lot of the old Star Wars toys.
The ones that are, you know, actually worth money. Of course now, I can't swing a cat without hitting Star Wars merchandise. Star Wars coffee creamer. It's out of control. I remember when the uh, episode one came out. I was just collecting Star Wars stuff like crazy, like the, the Pepsi cans, the Taco Bell toys, everything. So I was like, oh, Star Wars stuff from the first three movies is worth a lot of money. So if I save this stuff, it'll be worth a lot of money. Of course, it's the old baseball card racket, right? They're only worth money because there aren't very many of them around. So I eventually toss those because they're not worth anything. There's just so many of them. Collecting collecting Star Wars merch at this point is a fool's game because there's just so darn much of it. Oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, let's see, Comic Book Man, you ever watch that show? They have uh, old Star Wars stuff on every once in a while. What do they have recently? It's something really valuable. I think it was like a uh, Luke Skywalker with a lightsaber, but it was like one of those lightsabers that kind of retracts. Or extends, you know, it's like a little plastic lightsaber in the action figure. I think they were either, they, they broke too easily or something, so they stopped making them, and that's why they're worth so much. A little turbo going. One thousand points. Ah. Look at that. I healed. I knew there was something you could do. Ah. 1160. <sighs> Lightsaber. I was Darth Vader for Halloween this year. Alright, enough of that. <sighs> what are we at? 35 minutes? I've scored somewhere over 2,000 is my high score so far. I'm going to try this strategy, sort of the hover right in front of them strategy. Nope. Really booking. Ah.
Yeah, you get points for hitting the missiles. It's an extra level technique right there. Thumbs are getting tired. Ah. I'm gonna turn on turbo. See how that changes the game. I'll do that next. Turn on some turbo. Ah. I said it was, uh, I think, 48 shots. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 17 20, 21, 22, 20. Well, maybe it was 20 something shots. I thought it was written in the manual, it was like 48 or something. Or maybe I got them in one of the. The weak spots or something. Oh. Armor is way too strong for blasters. Ah. Well, he's booking. You can hear him stomping. We're at the 38 minute mark here. You know, I, when I played this on Atari, whenever I played Atari, I didn't play for long periods of time. I'm like 10, 15 minutes at a time. With the exception of a few games. So I sit down for an hour. Playing a play a single Atari game. It's uh, kind of a new experience for me. Of course, when I had the Atari, it was it was post crash, so I, everyone who had an Atari had piles of games. You know, 30, 40 games. So I'd be always switching between games. You know, playing Pitfall for a while, then Star Wars, then Combat. Pac-Man. Doing pretty good this run. Whoa!
Okay, almost to 2,000. My last uh, speeder. Ah, 1951. Okay. All right, I'm going to try now. Uh, this is a little bit of cheating here. So, just bear with me. I think it would be fun to try a turbo. If there is such a thing. Um, let's see, I might have it on my on my pad itself. Okay, back over here. So I think if I put on this Well that's that's turbo. Oh no, there's no difference. Hmm. But if I hold it down, I don't have to keep pushing the button, I can just hold it down. Let's try this strategy. Let's see how this does. I don't know, it seems a little slower. I could have sworn that, that was a turbo mode. Oh well. I can't, I couldn't find the turbo option in this emulator either, so... I'm sure they made turbo controllers. Sorry. Alright, so I'll play it to the end of this, and then I've got one more dumb surprise to probably finish out the, uh, the hour. And when I say dumb surprise, I mean really dumb. You thought me playing with that lightsaber was dumb? S settle down. Settle on in for some real dumbness. <laughs> so I was telling you about that whole uh, Kylo Ren is uh, Luke Skywalker theory my son actually brought home that theory from school as well. Now, of course, I heard about it before. But apparently that's the talk of the playground, is that he calls him the new bad guy, who I know is Kylo Ren, he is actually Luke Skywalker. That's the playground theory. So that's the word on the street from the second grade recess. Right. We're at the 45 minute mark. Ah. 
่ะเอกุบิสรีสปอนด์อิมพีเรียลวอลเกอร์สนี่คือรอบสองนี่คือรอบสองคัตโซโล่ดูคัพปี้นี่คือรอบสองนั่นคือเป็นอัลเทอร์เนทเกมของนี้คุณอยู่รอบสองและคุณต้องไปหาสกายวอล์เกอร์และโซโล่คุณจะใช้ความแตกต่างแต่ถ้าคุณใช้วอล์เกอร์คุณจะต้องหาแบบไม่รู้ถังหรืออะไรอย่างเงี้ยTo the dumb surprise. So having these scores around would be a good baseline for the uh, the next thing I'm about to attempt. So I expect the scores will go way down. Ah! All right. All right. So here we go. Let's see how this works. All right, can you guys hear me? Okay, I think the sound is looking okay. It's spiking correctly. We need to take these off because what I've got over here is a Star Wars helmet or Star Wars helmet, Darth Vader helmet from Halloween. So I'm now going to attempt to play The Empire Strikes Back for Atari 2600, not only without my glasses, but inside this. Plastic helmet, which let me tell you, after wearing this for a few hours on Halloween, is not terribly comfortable, not really easy to see out of. Um, people came up to me and said all kinds of stuff to me that I didn't really know what they were saying. It's not easy to hear out of it either. So here we go. This is the full thing, by the way, not just the front mask, but the the full helmet. Oh boy. Okay. How's the sound? See, I can't even see how much time is left. <laughs> uh, okay, we're about the 15 minute mark. <laughs> okay. Obi Wan never told you about your father. I can't even. Oh yeah, I can't hear the game because I took my headset off. Oh boy! So if anyone's in the chat room, I can't see you either. The font is too small. If you ever wanted to know how uh, blind I am without my glasses, I can barely read the score at the bottom of the screen. It looks like a 145 right now. I can't really see the bullet firing from. Either or the walker. Um, but I I seem to be doing okay so far. You know, one interesting thing is that from inside this mask, when you breathe, it sounds like to me anyway, it sounds like a Darth Vader breath. Like, however, from outside this helmet. You sound like a lunatic. <laughs> okay, all right. 
I, I can't see the map at the bottom, so I'm just sort of going on what I'm seeing from the terrain at the top. Uh, looks like I'm at 337-ish. Impressive. Most impressive. All too easy. All right. Oh boy. 445. All righty. The only thing you can't really do with this mask on is, well, you have no peripheral vision. So when you want to look at something to your left or right, you got to basically turn your whole body to the left or right. Which is kind of how Darth Vader uh, is portrayed in the movies. He, when he turns to left and right, he like turns his shoulders. Ugh. Is that my first life? <sighs> Whoa. So yeah, unfortunately, glasses don't fit in this mask with me. And if they did, they probably get fogged up anyway. The costume I bought comes with the half mask. I always thought those looked kind of lame. So I got the full helmet deal to go with it. So we're getting some mileage out of this helmet though. I thought about wearing the full Darth Vader costume to see the movie. Um, much to the chagrin of my uh, friends and colleagues, of course, but if you if I, I went to the AMC movies site to buy tickets, and it specifically says, you know, we don't want you wearing masks as part of your costumes to see movies. And they mentioned Darth Vader masks specifically, as if this is a recurring issue or something that they've received a lot of questions about already. So they say, it's okay to bring your lightsaber, but you can't bring your mask. Darth Vader mask it is. They didn't mention Kylo Ren mask, but I assume that is the uh, close to that too. Stormtrooper helmet, Kylo Ren mask, etc. Well, I'm, I'm doing okay right now, which tells me that um, I'm probably not good at the game with glasses on, and so I'm equally bad with glasses off, and with this enormous mask covering my face. Yeah, it, lo it looks like this from the the map at the bottom, from what I can tell, I'm not getting very far. Like, I'm still in the, the first, like, quarter of the battlefield. I'm really, really starting to cramp up a bit here. Ah. 
can't see. Oh, there we go. I can't see. I have hibernation sickness. Now, when he flies up to the sky there, he kind of blends in. The other thing is I've got a little, I've got an itch on my cheek, I want to scratch, but I can't, can't get there. You can't drink water while you're in this thing either. Oh, okay, there we go. So, 1,487 points. Alright, let me get this thing off. There we go. So, I think my third run, still the best so far. We're at 57 minutes right now, so probably going to call it quits for the day. Apologize for the audio issues early on, but uh, you can get the gist of what I was saying. So, next, uh, next game we're going to play, it's going to be a Christmas-themed game, I think. There's some uh, some games that are very Christmassy, and some games that are kind of like yeah, they're wintry, so they're they're close enough. So I'll put out a poll for that. You can pick a Christmas themed game for me to play uh, sometime in the next couple weeks. So look for that poll to go out soon. I'm at uh, M Groves on Twitter up there. Not today because it's Star Wars spoiler day, but M Groves up there where I usually am. Uh, I'm on Twitch as Boo Hiss and on YouTube as Matthew Groves. So give me a follow and please vote in the next poll. And in the meantime, thank you for watching.